Hello class, today's lecture will cover chapter 13, Advertising, part two. Now, when you're working on a creative brief, the first part you should do is research. So whenever you are considering reviewing, creating a creative brief, you need to try the product or service you want to advertise, figure out its strengths, what are its weaknesses, Review any user comments or experiences and see if maybe you can pick up some positive points people keep mentioning, or maybe there are some negative qualities that you want to de-emphasize in your advertisement and maybe see if there are any differences between the way users react to your product versus the competition. And if there's maybe a key point about your product that you can emphasize and make a little more relatable or maybe make it sound a bit better for your target audience. Now, another part of developing a creative brief is discussing your client's goals with them. You also want to make sure that you're staying somewhat close to their budget and timeline, and also that you both have the same clear objectives in mind. If you're developing a campaign to promote brand awareness, then that's going to be different than them than promoting a than promoting them in order to get more people to buy things in their store. Or if you need to do something for a flash sale, it won't necessarily help them with long-term sales. So make sure that you discuss anything, any of these goals or timelines with your client so both of you are on the same page and you're able to figure out how to work best together and accomplish those objectives. Now, when you're setting goals, you also need to be ambitious but practical. Make sure you, you talk to your client and discuss with your team different ways that you can reasonably accomplish certain goals in the time frame you're given. And remember, if you have a more expensive product or service, it's, pos it's possible you'll need to create a longer term goal because of the, uh, the price point for it, or maybe you'll need to look at the company's previous uh, abilities, what other things have they done in the past and how has it worked for them? And also look at their competitors who are around the same size or in the same market and see what kinds of goals they were able to accomplish and make sure that you're, you're using those as benchmarks whenever you're setting your goals. And of course, you don't want anything to be too vague. You want to have something where you can come out and say, oh yeah, we reached our 20% our increase in foot traffic, or no, it only went up 5% in the given time. We need to go back and and reevaluate everything, see what happened and what we can do to make this better in the future. And of course, you don't want to confuse your measurements. Make sure you're using the you're measuring the right goal with the right tool and that you understand your campaign goals before you start measuring things. So, if more people are aware of the Tesla brand, then it isn't the same thing as increasing their product sales. And of course you want to establish a time frame whenever you're, you're talking about goals and, and what you need to get there. Consider your product and your audience and also the price point when you're establishing your time frame. And it could be one day, it could be one year. Often with movies, they'll have a year, a year and a half of publicity that go into them before the movie even comes out in theaters. All of that is building up to the opening weekends. And 
and the um the company the movie company trying to make sure that they'll have the best opening weekend possible because they've promoted brand, their um, movie and made it and made their their target audience more aware of its existence and what's happening. And of course, this will also help customers understand um, what's going on and whenever you're talking to a client, you want to make sure they understand how long they might need to wait before they see any improvement. So if it's something where they will have to wait a year before they see any, before they're able to really measure a, whether or not they have a sales increase, or maybe they need to wait a fiscal quarter, or Maybe the um, the flash sale was just the beginning of a larger product awareness campaign, then make sure they understand that it isn't going to be immediate and we do and you do have to wait a little while before they all see a result. And of course, you want to give them a more concrete time frame than a little while. Now, writing and advertising, you're going to focus on benefits and characteristics. When I'm talking about characteristics, of course, I mean anything about the product. Um, I'm sure all of you have noticed that different flagship phones now have their own unique designs or styles that they um, they arrange their um, the cutouts on the back of the phones in in a particular way unique to whatever brand, whether it's Samsung or if it's an iPhone or any of the other carriers. And of course, if there's a unique color that's maybe only available through a particular store or if maybe the newer model is supposed to fit in the hand a little better, then you might want to focus on that type of physical characteristic. You also have societal characteristics. If you're talking about something that's historically popular, like if you're talking about GE washers and dryers, or if you are developing an ad for a an up and coming group about how they're the you know new hip thing or if you have a a company that is a that's a, a flagship brand that's been around since the beginning of whatever industry you may want to emphasize that point instead and of course when you have products that are status symbols that's another way to discuss them and and try to promote them to a target audience. And of course, there are benefits for your customer's life. So if it's something where you want to say, hey, you'll save money because you're buying this slightly more expensive, but in the end, not as expensive washer and dryer because you don't have to replace it as often, that would be a way to show how it's enriching your customer's life. Or maybe you want to say this is the less expensive model and it works just as well or better than the more expensive one. You also may want to say how it's going to ease uh, an everyday chore. Um, like with Cascade, whenever they, they made Cascade complete, they said you can skip the sink because people in general, usually end up washing their pre-washing all of their dishes before they put them in the washing machine, in the dishwasher. I mean, because they, um, because you end up with a bunch of food and stuff stuck on them. Well, their decision was, let's show you how much easier it is by saying, hey, you don't have to pre-wash, just stick it straight in the dishwasher and it's going to work. Now, of course, it, I'm sure consumer reviews vary, but that was the idea. 
And of course you want to say if maybe there's a, a benefit like an enhanced social position, um, usually if you have something like a, a Rolex watch or if you have a, a Tesla car, Teslas are generally considered a more expensive and, and eco-friendly vehicle. So those are things you might consider um, focusing on whenever you're writing an advertisement. And the biggest way to figure out what benefits you should focus on, ask the question, why should I care or want this? Now, if you can think in the mindset of your target audience and figure out why they would want it, that's a, a big step in the right direction. And of course, when you're writing an advertisement and developing your creative brief, you want to explain in a clear way why this product or service is good or what this product or service is. You can do that through testimonials. If there's some kind of research you had where you talk to maybe a bunch of dentists about which toothpaste they prefer. That's an example of research that would make the consumer feel better about buying that toothpaste. Or if you want to show the product in action, in addition to describing what the product's doing whenever you're playing a video or you show a picture or whatnot, those are all ways you can clearly convey what the product is and how great it is. Now, Sometimes you do see really cool commercials that fail because they, they don't clearly define what the product or service is. A, a great example I think of time and again is a Super Bowl commercial where they had a hamster that went in a, a cannon. And that's about all I can remember from the commercial. They don't buy and most other people, when they were writing reviews about the Super Bowl commercials that year, said, "Yeah, don't remember, don't really remember what this was, but it was funny." So, even though the commercial was very memorable, it failed because it didn't explain what the product was. Now, some groups are able to put off the wall um, topics or ideas in in their advertisement, but they do it within a framework that makes it easier to remember. An example, of course, would be Geico. Geico's had a bunch of different kind of wacky ideas and advertisements and they are, but they always work within a particular frame. Or if you think about the State Farm commercials, they're another one. They did kind of those silly off the wall commercials, but they're able to to make it so you understand, oh yeah, this is about insurance and they always show the logo or the company logo, or they have a particular spokesperson who shows up in several commercials in a row. So the minute you see them, you know exactly what's being advertised. Now you do want to avoid any exaggeration or hyperbole. You don't want to say it's a miraculous new skincare routine or the the biggest and most amazing um, product ever. So think about informative ways you can mention the product and show it off to the target audience and make them want to buy the product or use the service. And you wanna write clearly and plainly, be straightforward, avoid jargon, a lot of times you'll end up with much better writing whenever you are straightforward about what is happening, or especially when you're writing a print advertisement, you don't want to, to you know, cover the page in words. You want to use the best words in the best way possible. And whenever you are writing your ad, make sure you're embracing the chosen platform. If you're writing for social, then make sure you're, you're targeting your, your writing for that particular medium. You don't want to write a Twitter ad and then put it in a newspaper. So 
or if you're another example, if you're writing a five second ad that goes before a YouTube video, well, that's fine because five seconds means the viewers aren't going to skip over it. And it's hopefully something that can get to the point, which is what people watching YouTube usually want. If you're writing something for TV though, you probably want a 15 to 30 second ad, maybe even a whole minute, depends what kind of time frame you have. And, but a five second ad wouldn't do well on TV because a TV viewer is usually doing some combination of tasks while they're watching TV. So think about your medium and make sure you're matching your message to your medium. Now, the single-minded proposition is the core idea for any creative brief. This is going to summarize why the target audience should buy the product. Uh, one way to say it is buy this product and you'll get this specific benefit. So it's a one idea for one target audience. It's a focal point for everything that's happening for this particular ad campaign. So great places to start when you are developing a single-minded proposition, focus on a unique aspect of the product, or maybe think of a, a claim that isn't made by the competition. Both of those are things you can do to, um, to help your product stand out against all of the other products in its field. And of course, whenever you're developing a single-minded proposition, you want it to be strong enough to make people want to switch brands from their product to yours. Now, uh, brand loyalty isn't quite, is a little different now than it, it used to be, but depending on the product, people do still have a lot of brand loyalty for different things. So one example, the Choosy Mothers Choose GIF, that ad helped GIF become the number one peanut butter brand in, in the country. They were third or I think even fourth, depending on how you measured it before then, because they were able to, their, their SMP, Choosy Mothers Choose GIF, said, hey, if you're a choosy mom, then that means you're going to use our product. Now, another, another example, iPod, when, so if you don't remember, there's, there used to be this thing called an iPod before phones were big enough to hold all the songs you wanted or stream them or whatever. And iPods would, would hold a, about a thousand songs. And so they came up with the slogan, well, with the single-minded proposition, iPod, a thousand songs in your pocket. Now, what that did was it made people look at iPod, which was already much sleeker looking than its competition. I think the Zune was still out around that time, but anyway, they had they had a couple of other similar products, but they weren't quite at the same level. The user interface on the iPod was much sleeker. The, the body itself looked cleaner than a lot of the other products on the market. So they were able to beat out the competition by advertising how much, how many songs they could, you could technically load onto an iPod. And the idea of being able to, to keep all of this music with you all at once was revolutionary. And it it helped them to, uh, that product was able to, to help Apple catapult into a, uh, a whole new level. Now, a single-minded proposition should be short and you're highlighting one key feature in a user-oriented way. Now, what I mean is you're 
if let's go back and see. So first thing we said was buy this product and you will get this specific benefit. So that's what we're doing. We are looking at one key feature and highlighting this one feature or benefit of this product and saying, this is something you as the user or the purchaser will enjoy if you get this product. And you're also answering why the target audience should buy this product. Again, it's very focused on the target audience, not necessarily on the feature or features of a product. You're finding something that the tar your target audience may enjoy about it and emphasizing it so they recognize that it's there. Okay, let's look at a little review of create a brief information. Now, when you're looking at a creative brief, you're of course going to start with research and part of your research is going to be trying the product or service, then review any user comments or experiences to see what you can highlight, what are people already highlighting about about this product, what do they like about it, what, what do they not like about it, and of course interview the client about their goal and budget timeline, what are their objectives, and their objective statement, why are they advertising, is it going to be brand awareness, or are they increasing sales, are they planning to promote a new product, And of course, you want to work on a single-minded proposition so you can focus your creative uh, endeavor on this idea. So remember, we're looking at what each reader should find whenever you say, buy this product and you'll get this specific benefit or viewer, anyone who sees the advertisement. And highlight a unique feature or claim not made by the competition. So let me change that. So we want to highlight one unique feature or a claim not made by the competition. Remember, we're focusing on one point. That's the single part of single-minded. So it's one key feature related to our target audience. And the proposition must be so strong that you're able to, to make people switch brands and go to this new product. And when you write your support statements, you want to show why this particular method will work. What is the appeal style? What are the ideas? Your explaining the target audience, um, who is going to buy this product and why, when will this air, what size commercial space, um, is it going to be a minute commercial on TV, is it going to be five seconds, is it going to be a full page ad in a magazine, what kind of magazines are you, are you going to have these ads in, where will you advertise, what region, are there any particular platforms? Um, also, of course, you want to discuss what will be your call to action. Are you going to get the audience to act on this information by visiting a website? Are they supposed to copy a particular code so they can receive the benefit? Are they supposed to buy a product or get a service out of this? You know look at all those things and see what would be the best way to get the audience to act on that information. And a reminder, your homework this week, your broadcasting writing project is due on Sunday, as is your advertising quiz. 
If you have any questions, send me an email and I'll see you in class.